Besides actual battle, soldiers have a lot more to worry about. From dangerous chemicals to extreme conditions, here's what hygiene was like for soldiers in World War II. Number 10. The use of DDT. DDT, dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, is a colorless and tasteless chemical compound that was first developed as an insecticide in 1939 by Swiss chemist Paul Müller. The U.S. military used it during the second half of World War II to prevent the spread of insect-borne diseases like malaria, dengue fever, and typhus. Soldiers were given a supply of DDT powder and told to sprinkle it in their sleeping bags, and entire towns in Italy and the South Pacific were dusted with the chemical to keep their flea and mosquito populations under control. And it was very effective. As a result, the Second World War was the first war where fewer soldiers died from disease than in battle. DDT was widely seen as a miracle substance, and in the years following the war, it became readily available in the U.S. and elsewhere. But as it turned out, the chemical has severe environmental and health impacts. DDT is an endocrine disruptor, meaning it interferes with hormones, and it's also a carcinogen that has been linked with pancreatic cancer and liver cancer. Long-term exposure can also have severe effects on the reproductive system and on embryos and fetuses. Simply put, the chemical is at least moderately toxic. Therefore, DDT has been banned in the U.S. since 1972 and a worldwide ban was put into effect in 2004. Number 9. Mobile Bathing and Laundry Stations The first permanent laundromats and dry cleaning services at U.S. military bases around the country came after World War I. When World War II broke out, these services and facilities were extended to American military bases overseas. There were also mobile laundry stations and showers. Soldiers were taught how to use the on-the-go washing machines over a 12-week period at Camp Lee in Virginia. Laundry units consisting of three officers and 85 enlisted soldiers were then dispatched wherever they were needed, including to remote forested sites with no laundromats nearby. As many as six washing machines were packed into vehicles resembling semi-trucks, turning out 125 pounds, 57 kilograms of clean laundry per hour. Each load of laundry cost 50 cents, and while officers and enlisted men received priority service, civilians also utilized the service. Showers were available to soldiers free of charge and consisted of anywhere from 8 to 24 shower heads. These mobile units also offered fumigation services to get rid of insects. They probably used DDT. Both the laundry and shower facilities were meant to keep troops clean and lice free, but to also boost their morale. I'm sure most people can agree that feeling clean does wonders for one's mental and emotional state, even amid trying circumstances. Number 8. Hygiene Movies Before heading off to the battlefield, servicemen were required to complete hygiene training, which involved watching a film instructing them on how to properly wash their bodies and shave. As silly as this may seem, the educational movie was not because the men didn't know how to bathe. The officers simply wanted to reinforce the policy for the sake of promoting personal and collective hygiene among the ranks. Upon learning their destinations, soldiers received site-specific hygiene training. Europe-bound troops learned about trench foot and typhus, for example, while those headed to the Pacific Theater were educated on malaria, parasites, and water safety. The most influential film material made by the military was a seven-film series called Why We Fight, made by Frank Capra. Created after the attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941, it was designed to teach men the nature of America's involvement in the war. Some of Hollywood's biggest movie stars at the time, including Jimmy Stewart and John Wayne, participated in the making of the military's videos, which taught recruits everything from patriotism to the basics of staying clean and healthy. We'd laugh today, and I bet they laughed back then, but these films were still a key part of military culture back during the war. Number 7. The Millbank Disinfector to combat lice and lice eggs during World War II, the U.S. Armed Forces ran their bedding, clothing, and rugs through a British-developed portable device called the Millbank Hot Air Disinfector and Drying Machine. It rid as many as 100 suits or blankets of bugs and their eggs in an hour or less by circulating hot air measuring 338 degrees Fahrenheit, 170 degrees Celsius, through its mixing chamber. As effective as the Millbank Disinfector was, it struggled to keep up with the lice infestations of World War II. It was entirely possible for the freshly cleaned items to immediately become infested again. Lice was a major problem in World War II, especially because these bugs spread typhus and other diseases. Many prisoners in occupied Ukraine became louse feeders at the Lviv Institute for Typhus and Virus Research, acting as human sources of blood for typhus-infected lice for the purpose of researching potential vaccines against the illness. Louse feeders were at a significant risk for infection, but they received extra food rations and avoided being sent to labor and concentration camps in exchange for their services. 
They only spent an hour per day feeding the lice via a device attached to their leg, and this freed up time for the many Laos feeders who were intellectuals before the war to engage in their research. And as dangerous as Laos feeding sounds, it was arguably life-saving for some people because it kept them away from the war violence. Although the typhus vaccines developed at the institute were meant to fall into German hands, some employees worked to smuggle the shots to the Polish resistance and even to concentration camps. Number 6. STI Prevention STIs like syphilis and gonorrhea were common among single U.S. soldiers who sought companionship and often had multiple different partners while fighting in World War II, particularly those serving in the Army and Navy. This prompted officials to launch a campaign to test the troops, to encourage wise intimate decisions, and to carefully track disease outbreaks. Soldiers were urged to either remain abstinent or to commit to long-term monogamous relationships with STD-free partners, and they were also encouraged to always wear condoms. The U.S. government printed a series of brochures about maintaining good sexual health. They contained information to help troops easily diagnose and treat diseases, and medics were equipped with the proper medications for doing so. These pamphlets also offered wisdom, reminding soldiers that manhood is defined by having healthy reproductive organs and that intercourse is not necessary to keep strong and well. The literature also offered ominous warnings, including the possibility of an STD ruining a man's body and that most prostitutes have venereal disease. Troops were urged to avoid gambling their health away to so-called easy women, and that if an individual absolutely lacks self-control, to at least practice safe sex. Number 5. The Shoe Pack System during World War I, around 2,000 U.S. soldiers and 75,000 British soldiers died from a serious condition called trench foot, also known as immersion foot syndrome, which is caused by the feet remaining wet for too long and a lack of dry socks and shoes. Trench foot deprives the feet of nutrients and oxygen, causing them to lose circulation and nerve function. Ultimately, it leads to worse conditions like gangrene, ulcers, permanent nerve damage, and even death. To prevent history from repeating itself during World War II, the British government encouraged women to make socks for soldiers and factories shifted their production to sock making. In 1944, the U.S. implemented the shoe pack system, which provided troops with waterproof lined boots. Manufactured by L.L. Bean, the shoe pack was made of layers of rubber and leather and lined with felt to maintain warmth. The footwear was in short supply and sometimes men had to wear the wrong size, but it was effective as long as they frequently changed their wool socks and kept their feet dry. If they didn't, they ended up with a condition called macerated feet or shoe pack foot, which caused the bottoms of the feet to get all wrinkled and waterlogged. It was not a pleasant sight. To ensure that troops used their shoe packs properly, the military established rules for wearing time and changing socks and insoles. There were also shoe repair teams which made it much easier and quicker for soldiers to get their boots fixed than it was during World War I when they had to rely on local contractors who used inferior materials and didn't work well. Number 4. Oral Hygiene Kit During World War II, many soldiers suffered from a condition called trench mouth, which was caused by stress, malnutrition, and inadequate dental care, leading to bleeding, pain, and gum decay. In 1942, the War Department urged American soldiers to brush their teeth at least once daily to maintain their oral health. Troops were also issued hygiene kits containing tooth powder and toothpaste, the latter of which was previously only a luxury item afforded to society's more privileged classes. After the war, toothpaste became a common household fixture. The U.S. Army's promotion of dental hygiene among its ranks also helped spread good habits to American households. While society became aware of the benefits of brushing their teeth as early as 1915, many soldiers were rejected from serving in World War I because they did not have the minimum of 12 teeth that the military required. You heard that right. Some people were rejected for being too toothless. Think about that for a sec, and then take a moment to appreciate how far dental health has come. During World War II, the military strongly pushed soldiers to brush their teeth regularly, and the practice subsequently took firm hold among American families. In addition to tooth powder and toothpaste, World War II hygiene kits were equipped with a toothbrush, razor blades, shaving cream, and toilet soap, and soldiers received weekly rations of cigarettes, chewing gum, tobacco, candy, and matches. Do you know anyone missing all their teeth? What happened? Tell me about it in the comments down below. Then remember to subscribe to American Eye if you haven't already. Number 3. Halazone Tablets Having clean drinking water was imperative to soldiers' health on the battlefield, but the battlefield often lacked modern plumbing and other conveniences. Pressed to develop a sterilization method for water during World War II, the military looked for a non-toxic, quick-dissolving chemical that could withstand extreme humidity and temperatures and did not taste or smell terrible. Until then, soldiers relied on chloramine tablets, which took too long to dissolve and did not work in high temperatures for very long. 
While its effects on bacteria were slow, a substance called halazone came onto the scene in 1942 for lack of better alternatives. It was first given to troops in the Philippines after being approved by the Medical Department Technical Committee in 1944. Halazone was capable of purifying canteens containing water that was up to two years old and was extremely useful in places that lacked purified drinking water. Tablets were included in soldiers' sea ration packs until 1945, near the end of the war. Once opened, Halazone had a shelf life of just three days, making it impractical in many ways, even if it was the best option available at the time. During the 50s, it was replaced by iodine-based tablets, which last for up to three months. Number 2. Water Warnings Water was a confusing topic for soldiers during World War II who received seemingly mixed messages from their superiors and the government about the use of it. With the importance of staying clean drilled into troops' heads, many were quick to bathe using the local water supply wherever they were serving. Little did they realize, it often caused parasites, skin infections, and other serious ailments. For this reason, the military began issuing site-specific water warnings to soldiers. For example, men stationed on the island of Leyte in the Philippines were instructed not to swim in fresh water or to use it for washing their clothes for fear of catching schizosomiasis, also called bilharzia or snail fever, a condition caused by a parasitic flatworm that invades the urinary and digestive systems. Snail fever is second only to malaria as the most devastating parasitic disease, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention (CDC). Symptoms usually start with itchy skin or a skin rash and are followed by a fever, cough, chills, and muscle aches which set in over the next month or two. People sometimes experience no symptoms at all, but the parasite's presence eventually takes a toll, leading to liver, intestine, lung, and bladder damage. In rare cases, eggs reach the brain and or spinal cord and cause seizures, inflammation, or paralysis. A snail fever outbreak during World War II caused the military to strengthen its water policies, ordering troops to only use water from approved places for drinking, bathing, laundry, and washing their vehicles or floors, and banning them from wading, swimming, bathing, or washing their clothes in local freshwater. For additional protection, soldiers serving in at-risk areas watched a film warning them of the dangers of snail fever and received rubber boots and other protective gear. Number 1. Food Restrictions Knowing that eating the wrong thing can have serious health implications, the U.S. military imposed strict guidelines on what foods its soldiers were allowed to consume. For example, American soldiers could buy food at public restaurants in the U.K., but not on the European mainland. But this and other policies were hard to enforce, and many soldiers ignored the rules and got food from places they shouldn't. This behavior worsened as the war dragged on and their rations became more meager, featuring fewer meats, fruits, and variety in general. Military kitchen personnel were specially trained before heading overseas to cook for the troops with the goal of improving cleanliness and food quality standards. Mess halls received regular visits from sanitation experts who ensured that the facility and its workers adhered to safety and hygiene standards. When necessary, inspectors subjected food handlers to additional scrutiny. It's not something we always stop to think about, but it doesn't take much to acquire a foodborne illness, and this was especially true during World War II, which saw 190 outbreaks among over 22,000 people, according to a 1958 report by the U.S. Army Medical Service. 76 of the confirmed outbreaks were outbreaks of staphylococcal food poisoning. Within three to four hours of eating, an infected soldier suffered from nausea, vomiting, and or diarrhea. While most return to duty within a few days, food poisoning can easily be fatal, which is why the military took it so seriously. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time for another exciting video right here on American Eye.